Dave, good morning to you, brother. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you doing? It is brutally cold, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me. Uh, I think that I, I live down in Destin now, or near Destin area, so it's uh, it's hit me a, a different way now than it probably if I would live here. <laughs> Dave, when do you when do you head back home, bro? As soon as I get off the phone. <laughs> So start asking questions and make it quick. <laughs> Got to go. <laughs> no, I head to the airport in about an uh, hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. So, Dave, we had the Remington Awards there on Saturday night. Um, what what was like your your thoughts the day after or the couple days after the Remington Award? Well, I just want to thank everybody that came and, and uh, you know, that was a rough, rough uh, weather situation that we had to go through. And I'm just really thankful that we had a decent crowd, uh, great support. We had some very good speakers. Um, uh, there was a gentleman, um, Aaron Davis, who was probably <laughs> the best MC in the history of mc <laughs> you know, you know, it was it was good time. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Mawai, super speaker. You know, really nice person, uh, and Jackson Powers Johnson is a guy that probably should be seen on Sundays pretty mm-hmm. soon. So I'm, uh, I was pretty excited about it. That you know, everybody seemed to have a really good time. We had, you know, we had uh, my good friend Mike Hill come in and sing, mm-hmm. and uh, he's an amazing singer. Yeah, and he I, is. You know, it's, he's one of the guys who's worked for me for maybe 15, 16, 17 years, and uh, you know, I've known he was a singer. He does it on the side and so he asked if he could come in and do during dinner and do a little singing and uh you know i thought that that went over well we had a couple of comics that, we had a you know i had a comic uh that night that did perform well and uh, it was just a nice night and we raised uh, quite a bit of money mm-hmm. you know we're probably down in the uh, attendance by about 25 uh, percent because of the weather and i i knew that coming in i mean right. i had guys who were setting up on I think it was Friday. They were driving from Omaha to Lincoln and they, and these guys are experienced drivers and they said, they've never been that scared in their life. They said they, uh, you know, a semi would pass them and all of a sudden they'd be completely wide out for five, 10 seconds on the interstate and they're going, you know, 60 miles. Mm. So I told them, why don't you slow down? (laughs) 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 That was my coaching point for the day. Hey, slow down a little bit. (laughs) No, it was, uh, you know, so it was a good time. I think everybody had a really good time. And then, you know, this I, this is the second year in a row I've been to an after party at the uh, at the hotel, and I didn't even know I I didn't even know they existed. I mean, I thought it was like a couple guys in a room. There's about 150 people yep. sitting down in the basement of uh, the Cornhusker having a heck of a party. So, you know, I stayed for about you know I 20 30 minutes and got out of there. But you, know, you get you get to be 64, and there's not much you really. <laughs> I'm gonna do the uh, funky chicken out there. I don't know. I've seen these people out dancing and stuff. I'm like, God, it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> Dave, as you mentioned, man, the um the weather. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I was surprised we had as many as what we did. I knew the numbers would be yeah. down uh, because of the weather and because of the temperature, of the roads. But I, it was a pleasant surprise to see as many people as we did have there in the money that was raised for it. And obviously the comedian, mm-hmm. Willie Farrell did a great job. Uh, Matt, of course, Mike Hill. I didn't know he had pipes like that. He did a great job. And just your, oh, whole, yeah. your, your whole team. Emma. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd have to, because we, we go to, we go to Burning Man together mm-hmm. and uh, we'd get to the desert and he'd start singing, you know, horse, uh, going to the desert, a horse with no name, whatever that song is. And then <laughs> I'm like, man, you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, he, we've been friends for years and so yeah uh, i was glad that he had a chance to show people what he can do he does it in in uh, new york city all the time he'll he'll do uh, these side gigs and sing uh bar mitzvahs uh, weddings so i can give you his number if you want to if you want to That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no he's a very talented guy uh singer he does uh you know he's actor um you know so he's I think he went to Penn State and was in their acting program. Mm-hmm. So, man, uh, many times. Good kid, very good kid. So, Dave, I, I had a, just an I question that was rolling through my head on Saturday. 
How, what goes into the selection for the Remington Award? Like, do you have a committee that you sit down with to select that? Or how does, how does that work? Well, it's, it's, uh, we use, right now, we've used uh, three uh, All-American teams, the Sporting News, the Walter Camp, and the Football Writers. And whoever is the consensus out of that three uh, becomes the Remington Trophy winner. There is no way I could actually, you know, watch enough football to make that call. You know, edge with. You know, I just don't have enough time to watch that much football. But uh, so we use those guys, and then it makes it a smooth transition because if we got a consensus between those three, uh, there's uh, you probably got the right guy. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, so that that was how it was set up. Um, I didn't want to get a situation where people were. You know, our first guy was Dominic Rayola. Mm-hmm. So we got a, you know, we have a trophy name from a, you know, from a Nebraska guy, and the Nebraska guy wins it. I'm saying oh, this isn't this, this is going to look bad, you know. But <laughs> every year, actually, Nebraska, you know, one of the best centers uh, in the history of college football, and you know, and he had a long, long pro football career. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that that he was legit. Um, so that's how it's it's picked. And then we have the uh, Remington Award winners, which, which since 2003, we've like we tried to shine a light on the center position throughout college football. So we've had uh, Jason Danley from uh, he was like sporting. I forgot the name of his company, but he uh, he picks those guys. And so we had like from the FCS, we had you know Gus Miller from South Dakota State, mm-hmm. the D2 Shane Bumgarner from Tiffin. In fact, uh, Lance Lightpole called me up. He said, "Hey, Shane's coming to Kansas." So that was pretty cool. Mm. He had one of you know one of his guys there, and he asked asked me uh, how he what I thought of him. And I, you know, of course, I raved about him. Uh, <laughs> Division three, <laughs> Jared Thornton from North Central College, and we would go down to the NA, NAIA uh, with Keegan Martin from Fred, Friends University. So, you know. We've really grown that area, mm-hmm. and we've been doing it since 2003. But this was the first time we had um, we had all four guys at the uh, trophy event in Lincoln. So we're real, we're, you know, we're real happy with that. And we'll probably, if we can get those guys to come up again, we might include them into the show a little bit, and maybe have a sit down and and ask them questions. I I would like to do more with those guys because I think they they really sacrificed a lot to get to to make the trip up here, especially this year. I was like. I was surprised that we got all those guys in. Dave, that, I think that has been one of the, out of the many years, there's always little tweaks and things that happen there. I just beamed when I seen those guys in that environment, in that venue, from those lower division mm-hmm. schools, lower yeah. in division only, not in town or anything like that. Because And just to see those guys beaming uh, with smiles with their families, is, uh, along with Jackson Powers Johnson, man. So uh, mm-hmm. kudos to you mm-hmm. and the committee for uh, making that addition because it's been great every year to see those different kids come up from those smaller schools that don't get that type of uh, recognition in such a broad platform. That was really cool to see that. that, It was really cool to see that. Yeah. We, you know, we want to integrate them, you know, better into the program. Uh, We, you know, in in previous years, they did, they didn't really come in. So uh, I would like to, if we can do it uh, to really integrate them in the program, have something It would, it would be great to have you two go up there and, and kind of give them a couple questions each, sit down, like we did with uh, that year we had all the Heisman Trophy winners that came in. And uh, that they was did fun. us a favor because we lost the speaker. Yeah. And uh, all the all the guys said, they, hey, yeah, we'll come up there and That's we'll cool. fill in for you. And they, it was one of the most interesting segments that we had at the trophy when we had, uh, you know, Johnny and, 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 and Crouch and, of course, Mike Rogier there yeah. answering questions. That was, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I think everybody got a kick out of that. Because it doesn't happen that often. When Absolutely, you get three Heisman Trophy winners in one room. So, Absolutely, yeah, it's pretty cool. From three different, I remember that we had you know, from uh, from the seventies, eighties, and early two thousands. That That's was a cool. fun night mm-hmm. to just sit down and just have an open mic, uh, just kind of yeah. discussion with those guys. Dave, let's talk about Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, the winner from University of Oregon, only twenty years old, and I know you don't get to see all the video. Uh, probably one of the most, um, uh, I would say, just laid backs. Uh, guys we've had you know and all this all the the winners we've had have been great dudes but he felt very comfortable in his own skin you know on stage and with his helmet but on the field what stood out to you you've seen these guys for a long time what stands out about jackson powers johnson this year well i mean he's he's a big guy who is who's very agile i mean he even scored a touchdown and was called back but uh i think in the washington game 
And, uh, you know, I talked to him about that. He's, uh, I said, that'd be pretty cool, even though it didn't count. <laughs> right the goal line. Hey, you know, look at me. You know, he, he is a guy who is real comfortable in his own skin. He was down at that after party and he, he can sing pretty good too. Oh know? yeah. Forget about the football thing. So he'll be a hit at the rookie, uh, Ricky skit, uh, for at camp, uh, you know, so the guy he's, you know, he's very athletic, big man. So, you know, and it's powerful, you know, he's got all the tools. And so he should be okay in the, in the pros. We'll see how it goes, but uh, I think he'll do just fine. We've had the last couple, maybe five or six guys really do really, really well they have. Uh, in, in the pros. So I'm, you know, I'm real happy with that. Um, you know, we, we also, we've been using uh, pro football focus. Uh, my good friend, uh, Chris Collins is one of the owners of that company. So, uh, you know, he helps me out with, you know, giving me some heads ups on who's really performing. Cause he has those guys graded every play, mm. uh, by different, you know, pro coaches and college coaches that work for him. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting, you know, more scientific than it used to be, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, I'm enjoying this stuff because now I'm get as I get older, I don't have to do as much. And we have a, you know, a good staff that's been doing it for a while. And, and I'm, I'm getting to the point where I got just got to show up and, you know, and have the events. So. Absolutely. Dave, you know, this, this is, this is not, uh, cause I got a couple, couple more, couple more questions before we let you get out of here too, and get prepared to hit the flights. Um, at your, one of your old places you played at your organization and the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, all points are mm-hmm. direction signs are pointing to that, that Kelsey's most likely was his last game last night. Uh, one of only, I think, four centers to be six-time uh, All-Pro, I believe. Mm-hmm. Dave, you know that organization. You know the position well. How how much of a um, an incredible journey has it been for Kelsey? If, it, if he if indeed does retire, but it looks like he's leaning in that direction, how incredible well, is that for him? He's become, over the last few years, I've really you – know, and it's not because of uh, Taylor Swift and his brother <laughs> uh, that he's gotten the attention. He is, you know – and he's, I guess he was like the, uh, I don't know what magazine, the world's sexiest man. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Come on. He's a center. You know, he's a looking guy and all the <laughs> sexiest man. <laughs> Dave's like, where was that back in 83? Right. Let's go back to the question at hand. Uh, you know, he's been through a lot and uh, it, it, you know, he, he, the reason that Cam Jurgens was drafted by those, because he was instrumental in, in, he took, I guess is what I heard. Now it could be wrong, but he, he saw Cam on film and he said, this guy would be, he would be like his hand picks, uh, replacement. Mm. So, uh, you know, seems like an awesome guy. I mean, you, you watch him on that podcast with his brother and he seems down to earth, mm-hmm. like, like most centers are that I've met along the way. Right. But, uh, you know, just a, a good guy. And, uh, you know, I saw he got in trouble uh, for in one game for moving the ball. Yep. Where he he kind of like did a little hitch and brought it up. Yeah, they well, call it false start. he's smart because all coaches will tell you football is a game of inches, mm-hmm. right? Right? So they tell you that. Yes, they do. I'll just mm-hmm. that my own question. Uh, and I used to do the same thing. But, you know, every play, this is a little pro tip. You know, he's much better in the pros than I was, but that's another story. Too. But we just, <laughs> no, what we had to do, what we used to do is you, most of the time they put with the they put the ball with the laces down. So what you'd get, especially in short yarded situation, you would turn the ball, do a little fumble, fumble, and then kind of nudge it up a little bit while you're fumbling around with the ball. Then you move your feet. Well, he isn't. What he did, he he got down in a stance and then he pushed the ball forward and the guys were already set. So the defensive guys' hands were he like already threw the ball. I mean, mm. everybody was offside, so it was a pretty easy call for the official. But mm. a smart guy, you know, and he's going through right now where he's you know he's at the top. He could still play if he wanted to. Oh, yeah. he's, he's a really good player, you know, really smart guy, uh, and well liked. Uh, he will be an all pro definitely. And uh, I can tell you right now that uh, we are going to ask him to be the Ford, the Gerald R. Ford Legends Award yes. down the road. If I can get somebody that that I know will, will deliver the message in a good way and get us the results that we need. But uh, yeah, he's 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 going to be an all pro guy. Another one. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Kevin Mawai. I mean, I had no idea he was all pro eight times. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was our Gerald R. Ford yes. uh, winner this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what a, what a, you know, truly great player he was. I mean, he played 16 seasons and was all pro eight times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is ridiculous. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. Of, you know, and he, and he's, he was uh, in the, I think in 20, 20- 19 he was in the uh he was inducted in the nfl hall of fame so uh it was a good group and i knew Ke- i knew kevin was going to deliver a heck of a speech because i heard yeah him, heard him uh quite a few times uh but a super nice guy former jet former titan and i think he started at the seahawks so mm-hmm. uh it's a good you know those uh gerald r ford uh, legends guys have been awesome for us and uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can get uh, Kelsey as our next one. That'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. So, Dave, we can't let you get out of here without asking the question that probably a lot of listeners want to hear. What is Dave Remington's outlook for the Nebraska football team next year? Well, I, I you know, things are looking up. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't have any inside football kind of information. I just, from what I see, uh, anytime you get in this day and age with all the movement you see with the portal and stuff, uh, I, people are staying and people are coming back for their sixth year and they've got two defensive tackles that are difference makers there. And if, you know, they got, if they get a great edge rusher, they can create all kinds of havoc because you can split the field with the big men and, and put a, you know, a, uh, a edge rusher out there. And your your offensive line has a tough time because they got to figure out they got to pick their poison. You're either going to go slide the line to the the two guys on one side, and you're going one on one. When you've got two big men that can pass rush, you, you give headaches to the, the offensive line because they can you know they can they can cut in the gate if they have a superstar on one side. You can slide the line. You can get three guys on two on one side, and you can go one on one on the other side. But when you got two you got a lot of pressure because you're going to have, somebody's going to be one-on-one mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and so it, it opens it up. Most of those big men are always getting hit. I mean, they're getting hit by all kinds of people in there. And so this, this would be interesting. I, I, I like that. I think Ben Scott looks like he could be, uh, you know, in the running for the trophy next year. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a real good player too. Yeah, I mean, I thought he played well uh, last year. He, I think he came in from Arizona State. I yeah, he did. State, Correct. I'm, yeah. I'm not yep. quite sure. ASU. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I like the way he plays. Uh, I think they're, they're losing a few guys uh, on the offensive line. They've got to find somebody that can replace them. they got a quarterback now that's a young man who's, you know, a five-star. You know, I don't put much stock in that. I know everybody else. Is one side, and I, I, you know, I, he's a Rayola, so I have all the confidence in the world he's going to be a great player. But I hate to put pressure on kids that just coming in because there's so much to learn, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they don't really show what they can do until they get comfortable and they get to know the offense. So, right. you know, right. I just don't want to put a lot of pressure on him, but uh, uh, he'll be a great one down the road for sure. So I, I'm pretty confident. I like what coach rules. He's all over the place, recruiting and using all the tools he can with the portal, with the deal, with the, you know, with the collectives, I mean, we're using all the tools in the toolbox to get a, you know, a great team and get the right players out there so we can compete in one of the toughest. And it's going to soon to be even tougher with the, the pack uh, 12 teams coming in. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how they're organizing and I haven't really paid attention, but if, could you imagine if all those guys from the pack 12 became big 10 West people, which they're not going to, I don't think, but, if that was the case, how awesome that the, the, the West right. would become the tougher league probably <laughs> in the, in the big 10. So, um, I, you know, I have, I'm, I have high hopes. I think everything is going in the right direction. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, you know, we've been through a lot of this stuff. It's, you know, just, we got to get some momentum. Mm-hmm. That's how it starts. Get some momentum early. And you've got, uh, I think you've got, some, you know, five or six, seven winnable games right at the start and then you go into the november series where you go into a lot of the pac 12 teams that come in i think i think we're playing sc and probably ucla uh they could you know it's going to be tough tough road there but uh by then they'll be they'll be a little 
beat up probably because they're not used to having the defenses they're going to face. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, but, so that could be a difference too. We'll see, but I'm excited. I think the, the big 10 is, it's pretty dominant. It could be the big dominant league. Uh, you know, and I was happy to see Michigan come through and win the national championship because for it just, I don't, I don't know what the final tally was, but the big 10 was not doing so good early, I think. And, no. uh, to see them come through, uh, it was good. Absolutely. So I, I was pretty happy with that. Absolutely. Even awesome. though they're Michigan, but they're big fans, so you got to go with it. Awesome. Well, Dave, man, we appreciate you so much. Everything you do uh, for the state, uh, cystic fibrosis. I mean, you're just legend. I mean, in our eyes, uh, just a great person. And we appreciate you so much for coming on this morning with us. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure, guys. You guys do a great job. And uh, we got to get paid. Hey, we got to get we got to get Raph up there one of these days to do something at the trophy. Oh, I, I, I that would be awesome. I'm in for the question and answer session. Every, with you guys. every time I every time I see Raph, we take a picture, and I feel like I'm a little kid. I go, "How tall are you?" Anyway, he <laughs> well, must be well, like six eight. I'm like, dude, if I was your height, I'd still be in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like how he pats you on your head I, every time I he like sees you. Five foot eleven out there playing football. <laughs> <laughs> I go, come here, Dave. I'll take a picture. Of you. <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you guys. We always have a good time. And uh, AD, thank you so much for what you've done. I think this, I don't know how many years it's been. You Can you tell me? Is it been 23. 15, 20 years? 23, I mean, man. 23. 23. You've been our, you've been our MC for 23 years. It's been a blessing and an honor, brother. And I appreciate man, it, man. You be, you've been a great friend. I really appreciate it. Likewise, and, you know, big we've bro. been able to, raise a lot of money for cystic fibrosis and uh you're you're starting to see with like with the the speech that nate otten gave yeah us. man we're getting results you know we're getting older cf people and that's what we wanted all along we want to find a cure and if we can't find a cure right away we want to extend lives absolutely and, and extend the quality of life with the people that uh, have cf and that's happening i mean that that uh, tricapta drug has been a miracle and uh, the, the Remington Trophy event, the people in Nebraska, all that money that we've made over the years went to uh, the, the Milestones for the research uh, program at CFF. And now we have a drug that's really making a difference. So, you know, we'll continue to do what we can do. I, I you know, I don't know how many years I'll be working for Boomer because I'm, I'm living down in Florida right now. And mm -hmm. um, I'm semi-retired. I'm doing what I can, but it's a lot different. I you know, you get to be 64 as an ex NFL lineman with the, I think the lifespan is 53. Well, dude, it don't look good. So you got to go out there and live a little bit. Got to go just do some traveling or something. That's right. Dave, real quick, All before right. we let you go over the years, yeah, how much have we, how much have the organization raised uh, in dollars? Uh, Boomers Foundation. About a hundred and fifty to hundred and sixty-five million dollars, mm, and mm, we've mm. probably in Nebraska alone, we're getting close six and a half, seven million dollars. That is so. Nice. That is, I mean, you look at any. I'm telling you straight up, any of these uh, these uh, football award ceremonies, we're the only ones who are making that kind of money, and we are doing the right thing with it. You know, it's right. like these guys. And I say that only because it's for it's easy because we got a disease we're fighting, and uh, so it, there's the you know the clock is ticking. Uh, I don't think is other than maybe the Heisman, uh, they make they make a lot of money, no, no doubt. But uh, the people in Nebraska have been so supportive, and I always you know appreciative of what they've done. Um, but you know, with it, right now we just try to have a good time every time we do it, and do the best we can, and try to tweak it and. Uh, make it interesting. It's a little different than most. I mean, we have a an auction that's, you know, it might be a little long, but I'm like, hey, we're here to raise money for that's CF, right. That's uh, right. You know, and, and and shine a light on the center position, and so we're doing what we're supposed to. Awesome. So it's, it's been fun. Awesome. Well, Dave, we thank you so much. Um, safe travels back to Florida. I'm sure it's going to be really cold there. Uh, try to battle that as, as good as you can. Dave, appreciate you, brother. <laughs> right, guys. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Love you too. All right. Take care, brother. Safe travels. All right. All right. Bye-bye.